Welcome back everyone and if you're new to the channel welcome I'm Dark Hour 717 and today we're going to be doing a slightly different video not centered so much around gameplay AUEC or even how to complete missions it's something that is still a huge part of the development and continued growth of our favorite space sim today we're going to be talking about our role as testers in the star citizen universe and the main way in which we can contribute to its success this is going to be through the issue council reporting system before we get started though, if you enjoy or find these videos helpful, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button. I would also like to thank Jayscale from Amarox Fang for giving me the idea for this video. Stick around till the end to see how you can get entered in for a chance to win an Anvil Legionnaire with LTI. With a recent influx of new backers and citizens, there's a lot of folks that are not entirely caught up or may not be fully aware of what exactly Star Citizen is. This can be seen in many ways through in-game chat as well as spectrum posts and general interactions. Though most people that do decide to join have a firm understanding that Star Citizen is a game in development that is still in an alpha stage. But the question may come up, what is an alpha? As defined by Wikipedia, alpha is the stage when key gameplay functionality is implemented and assets are partially finished, the game in alpha is feature complete that is that the game is playable and contains all the major features. These features may be further revised based on testing and feedback. Additional small new features may be added similarly planned, but unimplemented features may be dropped. Programmers focus mainly on finishing the code base rather than implementing additions. So Star System by definition is an alpha game, which means it is incomplete and revision will be made based on testing. First though, a little background on testing policies and the process of Star Citizen itself. As far as testing, CIG has several different forms of testing from their internal testing systems to Evocati testing prior to a patch release, PTU testing which opens a further testing group through the various waves and eventually launch to live. And yes, I did say launch to live. As long-term backers are aware and many new backers, the live environment is just another form of a testing environment. We as backers have chosen to join an experience that is ultimately incomplete and still in process of development. And this is why the live servers really are just another testing environment and we as players or citizens are truly an additional testing source. Obviously, we are more than that in the big picture as our contribution to having access also funds the development what does this mean then as far as requirements on backers in the testing process? Honestly, nothing. Your contribution is strictly voluntary, and it's not mandated in any way much like it is for the Evocati. And for those that are new to the verse that may be asking what is Evocati? Evocati is from the Latin Evocatio, or summoning, also as a name of reactivated veterans in the Roman Empire. And it is a term for a group of players who are voluntarily playtesting Star Citizen's content for future updates of the game before they're released to the public test universe or PTU. This is a select group of players invited directly by CIG that assist in testing and submitting reports of issues found and providing recorded footage of concerns to help fix the problems prior to the release to PTU. If you believe that you have bugs to deal with in PTU or live servers, these guys really play Star Citizen at its absolute worst. They are made up of people just like you and I that are just regular backers. They are typically held to strict NDA disclosures and this is why you will never find streaming or posting YouTube videos of what they're testing online. Though getting invited to join this elite group is not a given to anyone. You can't be invited just because you're concierge or legata status as a backer, nor will you be invited solely because you log 120 hours of gameplay a week. Actually being invited is a very tough process and it takes a lot of effort. The requirements for invitation is that you are a regular and consistent player and that you're a consistent and frequent submitter of issue console reports on problems that you find within the game as well as submitting evidence through recordings of what you're finding and input as to what you were doing at the time that it occurred. If you consistently do these things, there's a small chance that you may just one day be invited to join this elite group. Now, we're not here today to talk about the Evocati though. But having an understanding about the testing practices at all levels is important. This allows a better understanding for the state of the game as well as the steps it takes through the process to the point that we see it on the live servers. So as backers, how is it that we contribute to testing outside of just playing the game? At 
times if you go on spectrum it takes little to no effort to find people posting and bringing up concerns that they are experiencing in game and looking for advice or workarounds you'll also see this frequently of course in sc testing chat as well and just for a little update the sc testing chat forum is a forum within spectrum that any backer can access in regards to things being seen in game as well as a daily message that will also update on current conditions ptu release expectations and more I'll have a link in the description direct to the SC testing chat page for those that want to check it out. Definitely recommend everybody does as there's a ton of useful information in here and also it can provide valuable links to many issue council reports from submitters. But that brings us to the topic today and that is the issue council. So what is the issue council? The name says it all to be honest. This is the resource that all star citizen backers have to report problems, bugs, or glitches that they experience in the game or through the launcher. It is CIG's direct link to its largest and most valuable testing asset. That's us, the backers. Yes, if you spend any amount of time on Spectrum, you'll undoubtedly see numerous issues being listed or brought up as problematic in game. And a lot of these you will see somewhere in the conversation someone is asking if they submitted an issue console report. This is the key to trying to get any problem you encounter in game resolved, especially since if you experience something, most likely many others have as well. The Issue Council as a tool is highly regarded by many teams at CIG such as the QA team and developers. This is their link to hear and see what we are experiencing as in comparison to what they see. Our eyes vastly outnumber theirs and we're more likely to catch things that they may not. With this being the case, we have a system set up to support them and submit issues that we encounter in the game. This tool is a key part of the development and the fact that through the reports, they can gauge what issues are most seen and most affecting the game and can address and prioritize them accordingly. The thing to remember, it is not mandatory that any backer does this, but the development and progress of Star Citizen does rely a great deal on the information that we volunteer. So how do you submit a report when you encounter something? Well, first you're going to go to the RSI website and you're going to sign in. After that, you're going to hover over the development tab and click issue council. Two choices are here, star citizen or the issue council bugs. For in-game issues on live or PTU servers, select star citizen. Issue council bugs should be selected when you're having a problem with the issue council reporting system itself. And yes, if you look at several listed items in the issue council bug selection, they are pertaining to gameplay issues, but these are incorrectly entered and will not get the attention that they need. Once on the Star Citizen project page, you can do a search for the issue you're reporting. If a similar or same issue pops up, then you can contribute to an existing report by just selecting contribute on the side of the entry. Once in the entry, you'll see on the right side that you can click contribute. Follow the prompts to answer the questions, and when you get to the attributes, you'll want to go to the full path listed. This path is shown in the box, and it picks up from the Star Citizen folder in the program files. Make sure to copy the correct ones from either Live or PTU for whichever server you're reporting for. Once at the attributes.xml file, open it in Notepad and copy and paste the contents here. After that, select your game version from the dropdown, then add any comments in the box below and click next. Select the degree of effect that this bug has on gameplay from the list provided, then click submit. And that is it. Now you've contributed to an existing issue council report. Now the process is very similar if there are no current reports to contribute to. First you're going to search for similar items and if none are found you're going to click submit report a new issue. It will again ask you to type in your issue to search for an existing or similar report and if none are found, you're going to click I check these issues. It'll ask you to confirm your device and if you've never entered it or need to, directions on how to can be seen right here. Though you can enter it manually if you choose to, or you have the option of uploading a DXDiag file, and there's instructions right here on how to do that. Me personally, I find that that's the best way to do it. Once entered, select this is my device and you may need to click it again on the next page, and this will bring you to an optional setting. In the optional settings, it's going to ask you about your screen resolution as well as what kind of drive you're running the game on. After that, you're going to enter the game version that you're playing, whether it's PTU or live. And then after that, you're going to select the best topic that covers your concern. Following that, you're going to select the severity. Then it will bring you to the steps that it takes to lead up to the issue. Enter each one on an individual line, 
all the way up until the issue occurred. Then you're going to fill in a text description as to what went wrong. Then after that, you're going to fill in a text description of what you had actually expected to have happen. Then you're going to click next. And if it's a situation in which you found a workaround, describe the workaround that you used here. And if there is no workaround available, leave this blank. If by chance you do have a video or a recording of the situation that you can include, you can paste it here. If you have no video or photos, then you can go right past this step. After that, you'll have to select whether you're agreeable to a developer contacting you if they need to, and then you're going to scroll to the bottom and click submit. Your issue console report is now submitted and is available for others to contribute to. Now that your report is entered or you've contributed to another player's report, you can see the status of that report on the side and see how many others have contributed. Also, people can come and just leave comments on reports as well, but contribution is key. It takes nine additional contributions for an item to be confirmed. On the main issue console dashboard, you can see recently confirmed issues as well as recently fixed issues. Once confirmed though, you still want to contribute to an issue up until it's archived. The reason for this is even after confirmation, the more contributions an issue receives, the higher up on the list of items to fix it will go. The highest contributed fixes get the most attention as it is a sign of what is affecting the largest population of players. Other factors do also go into this equation such as severity, but contribution is the first step in getting it noticed. Knowing that contribution is key, what are some ways to make sure that your report is easy to find and available for others to contribute to? First, you want to have a clear and concise description of the issue. You want to keep it short and to the point and do not go into long titles. One way I could have improved the entry that I had made would be to shorten it to just Pisces exploding randomly. You're going to want to use other resources such as SC testing chat. Post your issue console report there so that others may be able to immediately contribute and help confirm it. And finally, another great resource is your Discord. If you have your own or you're a member of a Discord for an org and they have an issue console channel, use it. List your reports in there for others to see. If you're a member of a Discord that does not have an issue console channel, then ask an admin where the appropriate place would be to post it for others to contribute. Through the submission of issue console reports as well as contributing to those that already exist, backers, we can do our fair share to help make Star Citizen a better experience. Again, it's not mandatory, but the benefits of taking the short amount of time to do so could help in the overall development of the game. I hope that everyone has found this useful and hopefully may have even informed some new people of this vital and important tool we as backers have at our disposal. I want to thank all of you for watching the video and remember to get your entries in for the Anvil Legionnaire giveaway. We'll be awarding that on July 1st. Just subscribe here and leave a comment on any video to automatically be entered. You can also get a second entry by visiting Twitch and following over there. You can also catch the streams on Twitch every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would like to support the channel, visit the merch store or the Patreon as these both help provide for our giveaways back to the community. And I greatly appreciate the support. But everybody be safe out there and we will catch you next time.